Well, the other day we looked at how we could uh, adjust the CPU voltage and add the ability for the end user to adjust it on the fly, which is really, really neat. One of the problems that we had, though, is in our code it only accounted for the big cores, and we needed to do the little cores as well. And so I found a commit by uh, DYWN, and uh, in particular this is for uh, enabling the little cores. So the big change here, if you notice, you have the big core, right, and then you have the little core. So it's pretty much the exact same code transcribed again, but this time BC is replaced with LC. Um, what we see here, as far as how this works, is uh, this is a for loop, and it's saying um, it's going to start with a number, it's going to start with the number 1, and it says for every time that 1 is less than the maximum number of frequencies available for this little core, I want you to add one more. So you do this and then add one more and then do it again and add one more and do it again and add one more until and you just keep repeating this process until that number is uh, no longer less than the maximum number of frequencies available for that little core. Now some of you, uh, if you're familiar with programming at all, you might say, well why not just put this in here, you already have a for loop going on here. Why not just put it in here, conserve on some code, save a little bit of uh, uh, time, space, and, and all that. But the problem is, is that not all cores are created equal. For instance, the big cores, we might adjust the frequencies to have more table than uh, the number of frequencies in the table for the little core. For instance, if we decide to overclock the little core and we add one more frequency to it, well, then you won't be able to control it from here. Or worse, if you overclock the big core, and then the little core doesn't have an extra one, you'll actually have a crash condition because it'll be like, uh, I'm looking for this extra line and I can't find it, and I don't know what to do, and so then the kernel kind of panics. So this is really great, uh, great stuff here. Um, so we're going to take a look uh, at what we have right here. This is what we had before. You know, if that buffer returns zero and then the big core. So we're going to go ahead and add this portion of for the uh, little cores. So we copy that and it goes after the end of this method and before the return count. So at the end of that, we can paste that in there. You can probably put a line in there just to make it uh, look nice. So we'll save that. And then the second portion of the code uh, is uh, down here. Um, now notice, actually I might have just put that in the wrong spot. Let's double check here. No, okay. It's in the right spot. So then... So there's that first one, you know, the for loop right there for the big core, then the for loop for the little core, and then we come down here and we have the for loop for the big core again, and that's where we're going to take a look at this portion. So you have that for loop for the big core, but notice before it ends... we're going to put in between this return ret and this scan buffer line right here. We're going to be putting in this code. So let's grab all of this. So between this return ret and this code down here to return scan. Get rid of that extra line there. So notice this line is the same as this one. So essentially it's just actually this code added. But, um, so what we have here also is the same thing. We have our big core. As long as that number is less than the big core, let's keep going through this loop. And in this loop, we're going to do these things. We're going to scan. We're going to return. Uh, we're going to you know, set that corner voltage to be whatever we've we've input from the user space. So, pretty handy little code. Uh, very nice uh, gimmicky trick there that they've done. That uh, is just just uh, 
pretty amazing to me. So we're going to go ahead and give that a go, let that build, and uh, we will uh, see what we get. All right, great. So it looks like that built successfully. So now let's uh, go ahead. We'll take that uh, boot image and we'll zip it up in our handy zip. And then we can uh, go ahead and flash that to the phone and see what we get. All right, so I made a recording of uh, using that. And notice now we have the big cores and then we have the little cores. Uh, I do think it would benefit from a little bit of separation in here but that's not uh, Colonel Adiuter's fault, uh, the app that I'm using. It's actually just the way that they're presented. So um, definitely working which is a huge huge improvement. Uh, now we can control all eight cores um, voltage across all the frequencies which is uh, really really handy. Uh, thing to have. So hopefully uh, that was useful to you and uh, I think we're running to the end of uh, modifications by uh, DWYN um, that we've been borrowing from on um, on GitHub. Uh, but uh, that's alright. I've got a couple other good ones that I'm looking at from uh, some other great uh, developers that I'd like to implement on this phone just to kind of give you an idea of how we can uh, make some other changes and, uh, you know, um, further improve our kernel. Hopefully it's useful to you when you're working on your own kernel. While the exact method, uh, well, what I should say, the exact code may be different, the method will be the same. And uh, so I don't expect you to take these things and use them as a copy and paste drop-in for your kernel but that you can look at these things, go out, figure out how to find similar things for your kernel, either work that you can borrow and use, or work that you can take from a different kernel and modify for your use as well. Remember, this whole voltage thing started on a, I think it was a 8952, and so then uh, just got modified for 8939, and now uh, modified some more to include the uh, little cores as well. So hopefully you can do the same when you're working on your kernel as well.